Okay, so this week I've asked you several questions. Um, I asked everybody to build the Cartesian Diver, and I gave you instructions on how to do that on, uh, I guess you probably got them on Tuesday. And when you squeeze the bottle, the diver goes down. When you let off, it goes up. I asked you to watch a few videos about buoyancy and about Archimedes' principle and about Pascal's principle. And I wanted you to try to figure out maybe why this works. That's not an easy thing to do. It's pretty difficult. Um, some of you may have been able to, or you may have even done some research and just found the answer. But I'm gonna try to explain it in terms of these laws. One, one thing you learned probably way back in middle school science was the concept of density, which is the mass of an object um, compared to the volume that it takes up. So like a rock and a styrofoam peanut may be the exact same size in terms of how much room they take, but the rock is much more dense. So if you throw the rock in the water, it sinks. If you throw the styrofoam peanut in the water, it floats. Archimedes came up with a principle that said that when an object is placed in a fluid, the mass of the fluid displaced has an equal upward force on that object. To, that's kind of a hard concept, but it's, it brings in the question, one of the videos I asked you to watch was about how big boats float. People ask questions like that. How does a big old boat like that float? I mean, it weighs, you know, bazillion tons and it's made out of metal and all that. And metal doesn't float in water. Well, you're right, but the boat inside the hull is full of air. And when the boat goes in the water, it pushes water out of the way. That's what we're calling displacing. However much water is moved out of the way of the boat, that amount of water that's moved has the exact same mass as the entire boat, whatever it weighs. Now, right now, I have my little Cartesian diver, which is a straw and paper clips in the water. It's floating. There's a little bit left at the top that's sticking out. But however much water that this has pushed out of the way is the amount that, that water weighs is exactly what this whole diver weighs. Now what I need to do is change the volume of the diver so that it's not displacing as much water and then it's going to sink. It's going to go down or actually I'm going to get some air out of the way and let the water fill in. That brings in Pascal's principle. So Pascal is the one that comes up with a completely separate law, but it's that when a pressure is applied to a fluid, that pressure goes in all directions everywhere. So notice the top, the water line right here at the top. When I squeeze the bottle, the water goes up. You see that? Before the Cartesian diver ever even starts to go down, the water level goes up. The reason is the air in the top of the bottle can be compressed. Air is also a fluid. Some people make the mistake of thinking that a fluid is only a liquid. A fluid is anything that flows, which is a liquid or a gas. Gases take not only the shape of their container, but the shape and size of their container. Liquids take the shape of the container, but they have a definite size. Well, since gas doesn't have a definite size, when we squeeze the liquid, it compresses the gas. That's really the secret to this whole experiment and the reason that our little diver works. When we squeeze the bottle, there is an even pressure everywhere in the bottle, in the air in the top, on every single side of the bottle, on the cap. The pressure is even everywhere. Now, when I sealed the bottle cap, it was just regular pressure that we've got out here in the atmosphere, which is about 15 pounds per square inch. When I grab the bottle, because the lid is off, when I squeeze it, that pressure goes and increases everywhere in the bottle because it's a sealed system. If I took the lid out and squeezed it, the water would just go up and come out. The pressure would be the same as the atmosphere above it. But by putting the lid, I can do that. So then the question still comes, why does the diver dive? I'm gonna cancel this phone call for just a second, apologize. Hey Bob, let's call you back in just a minute, okay? Um, it wasn't Bob, That's my, I thought it was my Uncle Bob, it's my Aunt Cindy, because it sounded like a woman. Anyway, on our little diver here, what happens is when I squeeze the bottle, the pressure increases in all directions. The air that's in the straw is what's giving this more mass to displace more, or less mass, but more volume to displace more water that's keeping it afloat. When I squeeze the pressure, just like the water goes up at the top, it goes up in the straw. And if you're real careful and looking at it with light behind it, you can see it. But as the water goes up in the straw, there's less air that's holding it afloat. It's kind of like poking a hole in your boat and letting more water in. 
In this case, when I squeeze it, more water goes up the tubes just because the air pressure, the air gets smashed and then the diver drops. Look at this drawing for just a second. If I put pressure on the bottle from the outside, then that pressure goes in every direction in all of the fluid, which includes going up in the bottom of the straw. So if my water line for the straw was maybe right there, when I squeeze this, just like the water at the top went up, or the air, the water went up and squished the air, it squishes the air in the straw. So this water starts to rise. And now I've only got this much air in the straw instead of that much air in the straw. And then the little diver sinks. So that's the combination of two pretty important properties of fluids. And we're not gonna do that the entire summer, talk about fluids, but I am gonna spend several projects in a few weeks talking about because there's a lot of other properties of fluids that we need to learn. But if you, if you were able to figure that out, then congratulations. If you didn't, then hopefully this explains it. And if you have more questions, you can ask. So thanks a lot and have a good one.